Hi there, and welcome to another Sage Canada training vlog update. Training for an OTQ series. We're starting another one. We're starting another one. So I'm going to announce my next race, my next road marathon OTQ Olympic Trials Qualifier attempt will be at the Houston Marathon 2020. It's the last day you could qualify a uh, month before the US Olympic Trials, which is a special race to me because it's uh, you have to run under 219, first of all, to qualify for it, but then if you're top three in the US selection race, the trials race, you actually get to go to the Olympics. Now, my goal is not to make the Olympics. I can't do that, I'm, I'm too slow. You have to run like under 211 to have a shot at making the US Olympic team. My goal is just to get into the trials qualifier race again. It would be my third US Olympic trials, uh, and I've tried to make it a goal, part, part of it being any surface, any distance, hashtag, uh, hashtag sage running, uh, because I do mountain races, I do ultra marathon distance races, 100 miles in the mountains, uh, and then I do, you know, still do the half marathon distance, still do, still do flat road marathons, and so it's kind of an idea to work on my speed over the winter, try to get another trials qualifier. Uh, in 2016, if you remember the OTQ series, I missed by 12 seconds, ultimately, in 2016. The standard was 219. I ran... Uh, 219.12 at Boston in 2015. Got 16th place at Boston on a, on a bad weather day. Pretty proud of that performance, but missed this trial standard ultimately by 12 seconds. And it's been a tough, it's been tough for me to dip under 219 again. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, back when I ran professionally on the roads right out of college with a lot of sub 30 minute 10K speed, I was able to run 216.52. Uh, that was way back in the 2011 Rock and Roll San Diego uh, Marathon. That was my PR, 216.52. Uh, and then run another 218.20, 218.30, I think it was 218.20 something, in the 2012 US Olympic Trials, which were in Houston. Uh, so then I wanted to qualify again in 2016, and the standard was still uh, 219. Back when I first qualified when I was 21 years old, it was only 222, and I ran 221. Uh, this was like 12 years ago when I was in college, though. Uh, so now it's a little harder, but you know, I've run, I've run under 219 twice. Uh, it's gonna take my third fastest marathon of my career to qualify again in just nine and a half weeks at the Houston Marathon. So it's kind of a last chance thing, working on the speed. I'm gonna follow the process as well as outline things. And yeah, if you go with those marathon performances, maybe you could kind of relate if you're trying to qualify for the Boston Marathon or something like that. Uh, it's very marginal. It's very marginal. It depends on weather. It depends on your exact fitness. And for me, you know, I've run about 15 road marathons in my career. I've run under uh, 220 six times in my career, right? We got the, the 216 PR. We got the 218 at the 2012 Olympic Trials. We got a... a the 219.12 at Boston, 16th place at Boston, also ran 219.18 at Chicago, uh, hot day at Chicago back in 2010 for 17th place at Chicago. And then my other fastest were actually, uh, I ran 219.50 at Houston two years ago. So the 2018 Houston Marathon, in this, this trial cycle, I uh, try to qualify I ran 219.50 at the Houston Marathon uh, last year in 2018. Got ninth place overall at Houston, uh, one of my top performances, but ultimately missed the trial standard by a brutal 50 seconds. And again, you know, I tried a bunch in 2015, 2016. I ran four marathons. Average time was about 219.50. Uh, I ran another couple real close to 220 flat. I ran a 220.02 at LA and a, a 220.00. 20 seconds off uh, at, at Houston again in 2016. So I've run the Houston Marathon. This will be my fourth time uh, running the Houston Marathon race. I've actually debuted there uh, in 2007 and 222. I ran in the Olympic Trials in 2012 there. I ran in 2016. Actually, this will be my fifth time at Houston. I ran in 2016 at Houston, ran 220. I ran last year at Houston, I ran 219.50. So hopefully, 2020 in Houston, we run 218XX at least, right? Going for the 218 OTQ, be my third OTQ. Uh, you know, if the OTQ standard was 220 flat, it, I could have qualified for by four by now, but woulda, coulda, shoulda, no excuses, right? That's why the standard's such a great challenge is because it's a goal that I've just been missing by a couple seconds here and there over the years. And, you know, not gonna lie, for me to get into sub 219 marathon shape is, is very challenging, right? Uh, and that's why I've missed, and that's why I keep trying. I like the challenge, I like uh, mixing up the speed. Training here in, in uh, Boulder, Colorado, here in the winter, you know, it gets pretty snowy and icy and cold up in the trails and the mountains, so it's a natural transition kind of to 
run more on the flat bike paths, which they actually plow, and work on my speed uh, turnover a bit, not getting too far away from VO2 max intervals, things like 1,000 meter repeats on the track again, gotta touch the track, right? Uh, even 400 meter repeats, really short stuff, and then faster pace tempo runs, right? The pace is 518 per mile pace, about 317 per kilometer pace, that is goal marathon pace. You ingrain that into your head, but you gotta do workouts faster than that, right? If you wanna build up that efficiency and speed, and you know, it's been a struggle but I got my training plan laid out. Uh, we've got nine and a half weeks until Houston. We're going to be hitting some pretty high mileage this winter, and it is tough. You know, there's challenges over the holiday season when you're traveling a lot, uh, seeing family, maybe eating more desserts and unhealthy food. Try not to do that too much, but you know, it gets snowy and icy and cold uh, in Colorado, but also in other places that I travel to. And you're training through, you know, ice on the pass. Maybe a track gets covered in snow, and you can't do a track workout. You got to do it on a treadmill or something to hit that velocity and speed. Or you're about slipping and falling on the ice because it's like 10 degrees out. Ooh, I'm gonna sneeze. Mm. All right, held that sneeze back. I'm gonna be wearing the Hoka One One Carbon Rocket, probably. Uh, this is my favorite marathon racing flat shoe from Hoka One One. Uh, nice and light, seven ounce range, one millimeter offset. It's got the carbon fiber. In there, I find it's really responsive. It fits my foot well. I like how light it is. It's my uh, favorite road racing, fastest road racing flat from Hoka uh, so far. So really like that. Of course, I do train in, in other Hoka shoes like the Rincon and the Tracer, uh, other road shoes like that, as well as the trail shoe like the Torrent and the Jaws. Um, but I digress there. I will be jumping in the Xterra Trail World Half Marathon Trail Championships uh, in about a week and a half. Uh, Xterra out in Hawaii, uh, mainly because I wanted to go someplace warm and tropical when it's cold and snowy here in Boulder. But it's a good way to transition into that speed training. Uh, it's a more runnable half marathon course. Uh, I'm not sure how much more formal racing I'll do between now and, and Houston though. I gotta work on my 10K road speed. I've been neglecting that turnover and that speed. And you know, honestly coming off of the Golden Trail series, uh, you know, grateful to be top 10 there and make the trip to Nepal and get to race in the final. Uh, and to run well at, at Pikes Peak Marathon, get second to Killian. It's actually closer to Killian Jornet at Pikes Peak than I was at Sierra Zanal, even though Pikes Peak is a much longer race. Uh, you know, those are good performances, but those are mountain races. And traditionally in the past, I've always had this uh, mistake of trying to transition too fast. And originally I signed up for the CIM Marathon, which is in like three weeks. It's too soon, it's too soon. I had to pull out a CIM. I said, hey, you know what? Maybe I'm in 221 shape now, I'm not in 218 shape. To shave off those extra couple minutes is everything uh, for me. And I've learned not to rush the process too much in the, in the past. The getting the speed back takes time and it takes dedicated track training for me, uh, like the 1,000 th meter repeats, uh, you know, close to 307, 305 kilometer pace, right? Sub five minute mile pace. Uh, working on that, the lactate threshold, but getting that power back into my stride and getting the mileage back up. To be honest, I was pretty beat up after Ring of Steel to make the Golden Trail Series top 10. I had to take some time off after Golden, after Ring of Steel. Uh, it was my little mini break and uh, I wasn't hitting full throttle uh, for that mountain race in Nepal, which was really tough because it was high altitude and like 10,000 feet of climbing, right? <laughs> 3,000 meters of climbing. That was brutal uh, and it's really technical too. But, uh, you know, building my fitness, my aerobic base back, trying to hit over 100 miles this week again, 160K a week. Last week was like, uh, I guess I was in the 90s, over 90 miles a week last week, uh, right? 145K a week. So, you know, building that back, uh, but also just working on the speed and the turnover more. Maybe I'll jump in some local 10K road races, Rust Busters, things like that to get that, that speed and efficiency back that I've been lacking. And it's all about getting that glute power, running with good form again, uh, and activating those muscles to, to run flat and fast, right? It's not mountain running. Mountain running, uh, running uphill comes kind of almost more naturally to me, but to get that turnover to run under 219 again in the marathon, uh, again, it's always been a struggle. And who knows? Who knows what the weather's gonna be on Houston? Like, you know, CIM we picked because it's usually a fast, it's a really fast course. Uh, 
and the weather is usually pretty good, but you know, who knows what the weather would be like at CIM in three weeks. Houston, uh, it could be hot and humid. It could be really cold and windy. It's usually pretty good. That's why I've run there so many times. It's a flat, fast course. Uh, there should be good competition. I actually was lucky to get into Houston this late because uh, it's getting crowded pretty fast and they have this thing called the ADP Corral, uh, which I was lucky to get into because the starting line is, your position on the starting line is important. The Olympic trials standard, the 219, is only gun time. They don't care about your chip time. So if your chip time, if it takes you five seconds to cross the starting line, uh, you just wasted five seconds. They only care about the gun time. So your chip time doesn't matter. Uh, so it's important that I get a good starting line position. Uh, still trying to work on getting elite fluid bottle support. That's actually a big game changer. For front of the race marathon runners, you get to tape your gels to your bottles so you don't have to carry all of all four spring energy in my shorts pockets, which is kind of a struggle running at, at that pace. Uh, you feel things jiggle around pretty hard when you're carrying that much weight. And then uh, right now though, I'll, I'll be like everyone else. I'll be grabbing cups of whatever they have at the aid stations, trying to pinch the top of the cup, grab and fly. Sometimes you grab water when you mean to grab an energy drink and you know how that is. Uh, so right now I'm grabbing cups like everyone else. Uh, it's part of the struggle of, of marathon racing, but when you're shaving off seconds here and there, uh, you know, bottles would definitely be ideal. And uh, again, last time I ran Houston, got ninth place overall in the race. I actually did get fluid bottles uh, last year when I did that. But anyway, uh, hope for good weather, fingers crossed for good weather. Also can't get sick, right? You can't get a chest cold, you can't get the flu. I uh, got my flu shot today actually, but um, mainly so I don't spread it to other people that might have a compromised immune system, right? Vaccines work, real science. Uh, the flu vaccine is notoriously not 100% effective, obviously, but you know, if there's a 10% chance I could minimize my risk of getting the flu strain this year into whatever it mutates into, uh, then I've, I've helped prevent the spread of flu. And it's really, you're worried about spreading it to people who have compromised immune systems who might get pneumonia or something like that, right? Uh, I'm not worried so much myself about personally getting the flu, although it'd be nice to be, uh, have a little, um, a little resistance to a flu strain so you don't get super, super sick uh, this winter. But you know, you could always get sick, you could always get food poisoning, you could always get injured before the race. Training's not gonna go perfect. That's part of the challenge and part of the, the grind of the whole process, right? Maybe you're training for your first marathon or you're training for Boston. Actually, state your goals. State your goals in the comments below. Let's hear what you're training for. Let's state, state some of your uh, goals in running. Uh, maybe I'll see you at Houston as well, but that's what I'm signed up for. And we're gonna try to follow on this channel some more OTQ series uh, workout videos, as well as my progress vlogs along the way. Definitely footage from Hawaii uh, as we race Xterra coming up. But yeah, it's gonna be a, a tough plan and it's, it's a long journey ahead, but nine and a half weeks goes by pretty fast in the grand scheme of marathon training. And so, you know, I gotta get my fitness down quite a bit. I was doing a 22 mile, 35K long run the other day, uh, out on some rolling hills on pavement. I've been doing workouts like 10 by a kilometer already uh, at, you know, 310 pace, but needs to get down closer to 305 pace for a workout like 10 by a kilometer with a short rest and then you know some long tempos even like three times 5k uh two times 8k two times five mile types of workouts where i'm getting that pace faster than marathon goal pace and uh, getting that efficiency in while still keeping the mileage pretty high and then even working on more turnover and more speed with the shorter hill repeats getting that power back in the stride and making marathon pace at least feel more comfortable so it's more efficient um, and then not breaking down with any overuse injury or muscle strain or anything like that. So that's the goal. That's the plan. Again, thank you so much to all the Patreon supporters for really making this possible. Got a light. Um, probably have a crazy shadow behind me. But uh, yeah, just uh, really thankful uh, to be able to share my running journey here on, on YouTube. It's been I've been making running related videos on YouTube for over 10 years now. Uh, I can't believe it's become such a big part of my life, but that's all because of you. Uh, subscribing on here, liking these types of videos, sharing them on social media, interacting with you guys, meeting a lot of you in person at expos or races, hearing your goals uh, has been really motivating for me as well and really rewarding. So thank you. Hope your running's going well and uh, definitely check out our coaching website. Coach Shandy and I have training plans at sagerunning.com uh, as well as subscribe on here. 
Check out our playlist of videos. We've got a whole library, uh, all sorts of training talk topics over the last decade that I've been making on here. Thank you again for your support. Hope your running's going well. Stay tuned for more.